I've been using the 16 inch MacBook Pro since I reviewed it at the end of last year, pretty much every day. And as capable as a MacBook is, unfortunately, or fortunately, you have to use accessories to really get the most out of it. So I just wanted to compile a little bit of a list of all the best accessories that I've been using with the MacBook Pro. Let's jump into it. Okay, so for my day job, I end up using the MacBook Pro every single day, mainly for video work, content creation, and design. And since working from home and now actually more on the go, I've definitely amassed more accessories than I thought necessary, but some of them are absolutely brilliant and take your MacBook ownership levels to new heights. The way I'll go through this list, I will start off with the cheapest and go up more expensive. I'll also leave a time code below as well. For any of the products that you're interested in, either I will have affiliate links or Amazon links or just something so you're able to find them if you're interested in them yourself. And while you're down there, if you are interested in Apple tech, technology, gaming, or video gear, I'm gonna be bringing out a lot more videos on those subjects this year. So a cheeky subscribe would always go nicely. So let's spend a moment more time chatting. Let's talk about these accessories. Starting off with the cheapest and one of my favorites, the free Apple wired headphones. Yes, this might seem like a very strange accessory to mention, but I actually find myself using these almost every day. I absolutely love my AirPods Pro and I actually did a long-term review of them after having them for six months away last year and they've still not been upgraded. I actually had an issue with mine and ended up getting them repaired and I found them to be better than ever. But there's just something about the microphone and the reliability when doing things like video calls. These actually came in helpful just now as so I'm using some new equipment and needed to hear if the microphone sounded okay. The first thing that I jumped to are the Apple wired headphones. So these have the three and a half mil jack and I actually kept a few pairs from my previous iPhones. I think they're only $15 or 15 pounds, but as an actual use case for the Mac with the headphone jack, for Teams calls or Zoom calls or whichever platform you need, for me with work, these are just so reliable. For some reason, Microsoft clearly hates AirPods. All of my colleagues have issues with connectivity with AirPods and Bluetooth devices. So the wired headphones, absolutely perfect. Top of the list and the cheapest. Woo. Okay, so second on my list and second cheapest is one that I use almost every day. So I spend a lot of time in video calls now and sometimes if I'm in kind of clamshell mode or on my desktop, I tend to find I'm using these a lot more. So this is a audio and video capture card. This one, HDMI 2.0 in and USB-C, just USB 2.0 form um, in the output. This plugs directly into your Mac and suddenly you could get gorgeous full framed camera quality and be the envy of all your colleagues. Now, take that out of the work situation, where else might this be useful? Well, if you're wanting to get into the game and world of streaming, I would highly recommend these and they're only like 10 pounds. And most streaming services, most video web app services can't push out things like 4K video. Even YouTube takes time to process these. These pretty much max out at 1080p and around the 24, 30 frames a second mark. The sweet spot as well, you can get 720 as 60 frames and that looks buttery smooth. If you are using an external camera, it will be miles better than anything that a webcam can do, even the 1080p webcam in the MacBook Pro. You can pick these up, they're about 10 pounds. They're absolutely brilliant. They're even maybe slightly cheaper if you don't have free AirPods. So this comes in at number two. Okay, next on the list, this was actually sent out to me for free, um, but it doesn't differ in how much I have used this device. And it's really tiny and it is the Delta Hub. So the Delta Hub essentially is an ergonomic item for your wrist and using mice all day. 
If you're like me, I tend to use a mouse when I'm in, again, standing desk or a desk mode and not using the laptop and the trackpad. So this, essentially, you put it down, you put your wrist here, and it does take a little bit of getting used to, but it actually really has saved me getting more carpal tunnel than I was wanting. So I would really, really recommend these. And um, this is the first gen. Um, so they have actually created a second gen, which is slightly different. They come in different colors. It looks quite cool. And they're not that expensive. Uh, they also do desk mats. So if you are wanting to kind of bundle it all together, get some free shipping, um, get a desk mat and one of these. They are really, really nice. Again, this was sent out to me for free, uh, but I definitely would pay for it knowing how good and useful it is. Talking about mice, probably should get one of them as well. Okay, so next on my list is the Logitech MX Master. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, uh, I picked this up in Black Friday a year and a half ago now, and I haven't needed or wanted to get even go up to the MX Master 3. I'm gonna be honest, it's almost got to that time where I'm probably going to wait to see if they bring out another variant of that mouse, uh, but this one's been pretty rock solid for me. It has all the abilities of some of the other devices. It's probably just its build quality compared to the newer models that it's probably lacking. But you can still pick these up on Amazon and they are cheaper than the other variants and they're going to sell a lot more. Only downsides really are the charging is not USB-C like the newer ones, it is micro USB, but I've got plenty of micro USB cables around from previous accessories, so that's quite useful. But the pros, it connects to three devices and you just choose on the bottom, just press one, two, three, and it really allows you to actually go between devices really quickly. Uh, very handy for myself. I don't just use the one MacBook Pro, which I did, but I do have two MacBook Pros that I end up using and flick between the two. It makes it very, very easy and also pushes the USB-C output for my display to click into the computer that I want. So a really brilliant tool. Pair that, Logitech have got some software which allows you to customize buttons. So if you're in Photoshop, if you're in Lightroom, if you're in Final Cut Pro, After Effects, or coding or logic, anywhere you go, you can actually customize the mouse to the application. And um, that's through the software. That doesn't have to be the MX Master 3. This is all done in the software. So yeah, the Logitech MX Master, highly recommend this as well. Okay, it's an accessories video. We've had the mouse. We now have to talk about the keyboard. In my last desk setup tour, I did have the Logitech K820 something. It was a really nice low profile keyboard. But one of the things that I have picked up recently is the Keychron K2. So it's a mechanical keyboard and it's very, very different. But again, very much like the Logitech, I'm able to connect three devices to this, which is fantastic. Just press one of the buttons and just goes between each Bluetooth device, which is lovely. And it makes these fantastic noises. So I'm just going to turn it off. Okay, so that noise isn't for everybody. Not everyone wants mechanical keyboards. So if you are into the more clicky sound, more tactile feel, from my experience as my first one, I've been really impressed for the price. So I went for the aluminium finish just because I thought the longevity of the device would be better with the form factor being better. Um, but overall, I've been really impressed. I've been using it for a couple of months. It looks great, it feels great, and I really like the design. They also have loads of different styles. So this is the kind of regular, I think 75% keyboard, but they have 100% keyboards, they have smaller ones. So head over to their website to check out which one you might like. The only downside that I had to the Keychron was just the shipping time. So just with it coming from, I believe, China, like Shenzhen or Hong Kong, it did take a little bit longer to get to me in the UK, but once it arrived, the packaging was lovely. I've been really impressed. Next, audio. So the MacBook Pro, the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pro have now got the ability to push higher impedance headphones through the headphone jack. Brilliant. But one of the things that Apple have struggled with and audiophiles will tell you is the DAC, so the digital to audio converter in this 
isn't the greatest. And so an external device is probably needed to get the best audio out of, if you listen to Apple Music, those high lossless files. One of the things that I picked up actually was a kind of a halfway solution. And it's the Fawcett, I think it's, no, Focorit? Focusrite, Focusrite. One of the things that I picked up was the Focusrite Solo Gen 2. And um, this is really, really nice. Uh, so essentially you plug it in the back through USB-C, so USB-C to USB-C, however you want to connect it. But what it also allows you to do, and it comes with, is put in those proper headphones with the chunkier headphone jacks. So I have a pair of the Beckhausen, I don't even know what they're called. So I have a pair of higher impedance headphones, open back headphones that I now tend to use in the office, and this pushes out, and that thing requires some power, about 250 ohms. This deals with it really nicely. You've got the little dial here, and, and it just allows for a really nice audio. I definitely have noticed a difference between this and the MacBooks DAC in this as well. And if you are looking to go into things like podcasting, it has the XLR jack here as well for those better and higher quality microphones. So a really nice package here. Uh, this was about 70 pounds, 80 pounds. Um, and a lot of the reviews that I read on YouTube and on Amazon, uh, if you type in external DAC for high-res audio, they're about 100, 200 pounds for some of them. A lot of people have just said that this sounds better, it's less gimmicky, it's a simple plug and play, download the driver and away you go. And I think it looks quite nice as well on the desk, so I really, really like it. Last on my list, and one of the most important, I think, is external storage and quick external storage. So the MacBook Pro, mine has got a terabyte of storage. It starts at like 512 gigabytes. And the SSD speeds on these things are crazy quick, but they don't actually need to be that quick. So one of the things I've really found myself leaning on with higher and bigger 4K and ProRes files is external SSDs. So my choice for external SSD has definitely been the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. I put this last on the list because this really depends on the storage space you go for and how expensive it will be. So this is the one terabyte. I picked this up at Black Friday, it's about 90 pounds. So they do kind of go for about the 100 pound mark at a terabyte. That's much cheaper than the SSD upgrade on the MacBook Pro, which costs hundreds of pounds. What's really good, if you are traveling, these are going to go through x-rays, they're completely rugged, they're a really, really well-built little tool that I've found to be taken everywhere with me. In terms of speeds, well, good news. It pretty much allows you to edit any 4K files. So if you are filming in 8K, potentially, it might be working on your internal SSD and then quickly transferring that to external storage. But if you're working in 4K, I've been able to run this thing on Final Cut projects and it has been just as quick and noticeably quick as the internal SSD. A lot of filmmakers use the SanDisk T7, T5s, but I really like the form factor of this. It was really nice, really small. It has genuinely surprised me with how good it is. Okay, so that is my first MacBook Pro accessories video. Hopefully I've gone over quite a bit. Your keyboard, your mouse, audio, video, and importantly, how to expand your storage for less money than having to pay out on your MacBook Pro. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. If you really loved it, hit subscribe. And um, if you also enjoy tech on Instagram, find me on there at SLT4K, and we will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Oh, right, okay. Everything's about to run out of charge. I wonder how that sounds. Oh, look. So this was my first video in ProRes, and that's probably why I kept on looking up. Uh, I've got the Ninja Atomos 5. If you want to see a video on that and you've lasted this long, I commend you, thank you, and see you in the next one.